In this video, I'm going to give you some gotchas about late stage offers and explain how equity works in these companies. I got a question from someone who received a really good offer at a late stage startup. And this is what this person wrote to me. I received an offer as a director of engineering at a scale up that's raised more than $100 million funding that year and is now valued above $10 billion. My offer consists of an pretty okay base salary for the level, it's a sign on cash bonus and it's equity, which is tens of thousands of options investing over four years. Now they asked me, what do you think about this offer? Hey, this is Gary with The Pragmatic Engineer. This is a channel where I talk about topics around big tech and high growth startups. Now let's get back to the message that I got and let's turn to a little bit more concrete. I don't wanna use the exact same numbers and the same company name that this person had, we can generalize because this question is pretty important for director, staff level, senior engineers, people who are getting equity heavy packages. So in the US, the way this would have looked at is I received an offer as director of engineering or maybe a staff engineer at this new hot company. There's a lot of them these days. Uh, they raised $600 million in less than 12 months ago and they're valued at $9 billion. Again, there's a lot of companies that are valued quite high these days. For example, Airtable is valued at $11 billion. Postman, the API tool is valued at $5.6 billion. And there's a lot of other examples. Now in the US, this offer might've been 250K base salary, a 40K sign-on bonus, and let's say 30,000 options vesting over four years. They're gonna be worth a million dollars if the company doubles in value and 2 million if it triples. And in Europe, this offer would look something like 190K base salary, a 30K euro sign-on bonus, and less options, obviously, lower comp total composition, let's say 15,000 options in, in four years. There would 500K if the company doubles in value and a million if it triples. So this offer looks pretty good, right? Now, what is really important to know is the current market for late stage startups has radically changed the past six to 12 months. If you're interested in learning more about this market, I cover this regularly in my weekly newsletter, The Pragmatic Engineer. In this newsletter, I write the series called The Scoop, where I share how compensation, work conditions, right remote are all changing the way tech works. And I share some insider info that I come across. For example, I wrote on the details of what happened inside Fast, the startup that raised hundred million dollars just one year ago, and they burned through all of it and they went bankrupt. And I also visualized how people were given their offer and what kind of spreadsheets they saw. Actually, let me show you that one. So Fast presented people with this spreadsheet uh, which showed them the current value of their equity, how much it would be worth if Fast was worth 750 million, all the way to $12 billion. The company was valued about $500 million at the time. Now in their case, the stock was worth zero because the company went bankrupt, but their base salary still got paid. Subscribe to my newsletter at pragmaticengineer.com. It's the number one technology newsletter on Substack. It's free to subscribe. If you pay, you get a lot more articles. If you work at a company with a learning and development budget, you can probably expense this because this is an educational resource for you. A lot of people like the newsletter. Here's feedback from a former Facebook engineer who just recently subscribed who wrote that this insights are remote compensation and industry trends were invaluable during their job hunt and it already paid for 200 years of a subscription. So I guess they probably got a $30,000 raise. Subscribe in the link below. When it comes to late stage company offers, and by late stage, I mean companies that are raising series C, D, E, companies that are starting to get closer to potentially going public. They're typically above a billion dollar valuation, sometimes $5 billion valuation. This market has radically changed. There's been a massive market correction in the past six to 12 months on the public stock market on so-called high growth stocks. Now, I wrote in depth about this topic in my newsletter in the scoop number three, where I walk through what high growth stocks means, what is dropping and why, and how it's all connected. You can read more in the link below, but let me show what this actually means in practice for companies that are publicly traded. And let's take three companies. Let's take a gig economy company, for example, DoorDash. Let's take one that's more social, for example, Pinterest. And let's take one that's more FinTech, for example, Robinhood. So what we can see when I visualize what happened with the stock in the past six months, they all went down massively. They're down about 50%. They're worth half the price that they were just six months ago. And just to give something to compare, let me put a stock that just stayed roughly the same, for example, Microsoft. And you can see that Microsoft is roughly the same level that it didn't really move up or down. But these stocks, DoorDash, Pinterest, Robinhood, and more generally growth stocks in the gig, gig economy or the social media or the fintech industries, they've dropped massively. This was a market correction because the market decided that the multiples that these companies are trading at don't really make sense anymore. So back six months ago, 
these companies were basically worth twice as much. How does this connect to private companies? Well, private companies didn't have this drop because the last time they raised funding was more than six months ago. So that company that is worth, let's say $9 billion, if it was a publicly traded company, it will probably be worth 4.5 billion today, or it could be, but there has been no correction. And this is a problem if you accept an offer from one of these companies. And the reason is that company is probably worth less, but you don't really know this and it's not reflected in the stock that you're given. Some people are starting to reject offers from these companies because they're saying the stock is overvalued and it might be underwater. And I'll tell you a bit about what underwater means in a second. But let me show you what a company Instacart has done. They've slashed their valuation, basically their 409A fair value for their option from 40 billion down to 24 billion. And they did this because they want to be able to attract more people at the current valuation, so many people were rejecting their offers saying this company is not worth this much and my options will be underwater that they just took it down. And Instacart did this. A lot of other companies have not done it or at least not yet. Now I'm talking about equity a lot and you might be asking, where can I find jobs that actually give me any sort of equity? And many of these jobs are on my job board. If you go to pragmaticengineer.com slash jobs, I run a job board where I list companies that have great engineering cultures and score at least 10 out of the 12 on the pragmatic engineer test. One of the questions is, do you give equity to all employees? And so when you're gonna go through these jobs, you'll see, I, I give comments on how these companies score on the test. A lot of companies give equity to all employees, including software engineers. Many of these jobs have salaries listed as well, so you can get a sense of how much base salary they pay, and then if they give equity on top as well. And I update these jobs pretty regularly. So strive to get updates for the job board at pragmaticengineer.com slash jobs, and you'll be notified when new jobs are added. Now let's go back to the package, and let me talk about the whole concept of underwater. At late stage companies, it's critical that you understand if you're getting options or RSUs. And I wrote a detailed article Will, or I explain the difference between these concepts and all the other equity concepts that are worth for software engineers to know. You can check it out on the link below. But the short of it is, if you get RSUs, restricted stock units, it's gonna be worth something as long as the company has a financial event. If you join a company that's worth $9 billion and you get RSUs and the company goes public and is worth $1 billion, that RSU will still be worth one ninth of the original value. It's, it's not much, but, but it's something, right? If you get options, the option will have a strike price. And let's say that the strike price will zero out at let's say half the price of the company at four and a half, half billion dollars. So if that $9 billion company goes public and they're worth $1 billion, your options or your equity is worth nothing. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And going back to the, to the original offer, let's say you have an offer that has the same base salary, 250K, 40K sign on bonus. But in one case for this late stage company, you're offered RSU's vesting over four years with a double trigger, which I explained in my article. Right now, it's worth 500,000 today. If the company doubles, it'll be a million and two million if it triples. Versus having an offer from a different company where you get options and where they're worth something today. You know, they'll tell you it's worth, I don't know, 100,000 or 200,000. It's, it's not worth much today. It, it, it might be worth a lot more when the company doubles, but the, the problem is that the company value might not be 9 billion, so your options might already be underwater. And this is why a lot of people are rejecting late stage offers that have options today. Because these companies, a lot of them are overvalued. They have not done a market correction, which has happened on the public markets. And if you're paying attention to these things, it just doesn't make sense from a financial perspective to accept these offers. You're a lot better off either going to public companies and getting stock that is fairly valued and has a bunch of upside, or go to early stage startups where you get a lot higher equity sh percentage share. There's a lot higher risk, but you still Still have a lot of upside. Now I talked to this person and I gave them the advice on how to think about equity and how to think about options and RSUs. And this person was offered options, so it wasn't RSUs. Now one thing you should know is if you're offered, let's say, options, you cannot ask for RSUs. The company cannot change how they issue equity. They can do it, but this typically happens after a next fundraising round or when the whole company changes it. So you, this is something you cannot negotiate on. You also typically cannot negotiate on the strike price of the option. So you cannot say, hey, I'd like a strike price with a lot lower one, because by regulation, most companies cannot issue a different strike price than the current 409A or fair market price for the stock. That being said, for late stage startups for levels like director, staff engineer, or other high level positions, 
I don't think you should only think about the equity part of the compensation. You should clearly look at the total compensation package on what it's worth now, meaning how much cash do you get. You should also think about the potential outcomes if this company exits, how much money you could make at a not great exit, at a really good exit, at an amazing exit. Joining a company early on, getting a lot of stock, that stock going up. This is how people make life-changing amount of money as an employee. But you should also think about a few other things. For example, growth opportunities. Will you able to learn new things and will you able to grow into a bigger role? If this is a direct director position, is there a path to be a VP? And is this something that you want to do? Think about what you can learn. Is there a new domain that you can learn? Would you learn more about a rapidly growing company? Have you done this before or would you want to know more more about it. Look at the people who we'd be working with. At every job, you're going to be spending so much time working with the people. If you like them, you'll have a way better time than if you're having some weird feelings from the beginning. Look at the mission of the company. Is this something that you're truly excited about? Is it a cause that you're really into and, and you think you want to help this company achieve that whatever greater good it's working for. Think about the career options that this will open down the road. If you spend a few years here and you do great and you're taking on its director or staff level role, will it open other doors for you where you want to go? May that be larger companies or go and found the company or potentially get into other areas that you're interested in. Think about the work flexibility. Is it for a full remote job? Is that something you're interested in? Will you be able to balance whatever commitments you have outside of work? And there's a lot more other things. My point is the compensation and the equity upside, it's one part of startups. And there's always a risk reward. If you don't take a risk, you're not going to get a high reward. Like if you want no risk and good compensation, go to a publicly traded company. I mean, first you need to get an offer because it's a lot more competitive because it's just so stable. But those are the ones that typically pay you the big, the highest total compensation without much risk. Now, if you want to learn more about how compensation works and how there's three different tiers of companies from the ones that pay locally all the way to the highest tier, which competes globally across the region, check out my video on the trimodal nature of compensation, where I go a lot more into detail on these topics. Thanks and see you at the next one.